So far, we've been working with purling noise in one dimension. But remember, the problem we really want to solve is in two dimensions. Luckily, we can apply the exact same idea in 2D. This part is really fun. Remember, to generate 1D variation, we used a 2D curve to define the variation of the base color along a line. We used the X component of the curve to define the horizontal pixel position, and the Y component defined the brightness of each pixel. But to make 2D noise, we'll need to start with a 3D surface to define the variation across a plane. Think of a 3D surface as a collection of points which have an X, Y, and Z component. For example, here is a surface defined by a bunch of random points. Think about the X and Y coordinates of each point as defining the pixel position in a 2D plane, and the Z coordinate will define the brightness of each pixel. If we do that, we get a 2D output which looks like this. Notice the peaks of this surface result in lighter points, and the valleys are darker. As before, the output has very sharp boundaries between light and dark areas. That's because the surface isn't smooth. Luckily, we can subdivide this surface in the exact same way we smoothed our 2D curve. This will add new in-between points to our surface, resulting in smoother transitions. And that gives us this very natural-looking variation. It's exactly the kind of cloudy pattern identified in the shading packet. You probably want to try this out for yourself. In the next exercise, you can try matching some 2D patterns using this technique. We will give you a target pattern, and you can match this by adjusting, one, the base color, two, the resolution, this is how far we zoom in or out of our surface. Three, the subdivision, or how much smoothing we apply to the curve. In this example, we're manipulating a few parameters to get our look, but in a real production shading project, how many parameters would you adjust? Well, background characters would actually be usually in the hundreds, but main characters like Arlo, you would have up to thousands. If it's, he's in mud, you would control how much mud it gets, or the color of the mud, or how dry the mud is supposed to be. He could have rain, and so you would control like maybe how fast it is, or the different parts where you want the rain to show up. Um, he could have bruises, like throughout the journey, he gets bruises, and he gets um, like part of the journey represented on his body. Um, and you would have controls for all of those things, besides, you know, collars or, you know, maybe in, s in certain environments he looks a little bit too shiny, so you want to bring the shininess down or, or things like that. So there's just controls for pretty much everything. Sounds complicated. <laughs> it is. <laughs>